Imagine a scientist named Mary. Specialized in the psychology of color, she can differentiate between the electrical signals of red and blue and can explain their stimulating effects on our brain. Armed with the vast knowledge of these studies, Mary knows everything there is to know about color. She can detect its presence through simple brain activity and can explain the different properties of all the colors in the visible spectrum. It is, however, in this seemingly developed understanding that one aspect may have been overlooked, and that is that Mary has actually never seen color. Her whole life, she's lived in a black and white room. She reads black and white books, and her research is conducted purely on a factual level. This has stagnated her studies into being purely empirical based rather than of a conscious bias. And it's because of this that we can question if her studies are truly complete. If she were to come into contact with a red apple, experiencing the color not through numbers but as an actual experience, would she learn something new? If she were to stand in awe at the northern lights, marveling in its stretches of green and purple, would she draw new conclusions? These are the questions philosopher Frank Jackson asked in the 1980s. He saw an answer to these enigmatic dilemmas, questioning that if Mary already knew all the physical facts on color, but stood to learn more through her example and seeing color herself, could mental states be explained through physical fact? This is called the knowledge argument, and it is not completely grounded in the realm of colors. Every day we experience things we couldn't quite explain quantitatively. The love we may feel for our dog, the excitement we may feel at the end of school, and the boredom I'm hopeful you aren't feeling right now. <laughs> these are all examples of the undefinable. Although capable of being represented through numbers, these feelings, love, excitement, and boredom would never be done justice through spreadsheets or Word documents. They are the here and now that give meaning to our present human condition. Music is an example of the knowledge argument. Although fully embodied by ink on a music sheet, a song is never actually brought to life until it is actually played. And it is in this that it is similar to the color paradox. Because Mary did not possess all the necessary pieces needed to map out music, or color, sorry, it can be argued that her lack of experience with color in itself was a limiting fact in her study. And because this is the same as, I mean, we could say the same thing about a deaf sound specialist. Although capable of mapping out all the different sound waves, the emotion and feeling portrayed by music would never fully be accounted for. And this is why we could argue that his studies would never fully be complete. To exemplify the fact that some thing, okay, well, let's just start again. <laughs> Beethoven is an example of a musician that could never hear any, well, he could hear. He was, he lost his hearing, so let's just start with that. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, uh, I know, terrible. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Okay, so, Beethoven. He, although he seems to be a musician that was deaf, that's not very true because he already had hearing. He was able to experience music and then from that, he could remember the love for composition that he had. Preserving these emotions proved detrimental to his future works, allowing him to create the Ninth Symphony without actually being able to hear a single thing. This goes to prove that the essential ingredients for music are not qualitative, but actually of a sensory nature. And it is in this that we can see how important feeling is. Although the habit of a terrible musician, I pride myself on not knowing how to read a single line of music. This is true because instead of focusing on the strict rhythm and pace of a song, I instead allow myself to interpret the sound and emotion conveyed by it. By not worrying about what is written, I instead allow myself to listen. And since this is the most important part of music, I think it's really allowed me to understand the composers of my pieces. It almost becomes an intimate relationship, songs not being remedies to bad days, but actually dis difficult discussions derived by difficult uh, emotions. It's almost impossible to explain, so I think I'm just going to have to show you guys. So I'm going to be playing classical gas, no, not, not classical gas, I'm going to be playing uh, Gratitude by uh, Amin Tufani. It's a song that I think my dad may have already showed you guys. So uh, I hope that doesn't spoil it, but you know, we're just going to do it. <laughs> So smooth. Thank you. 
Thank you.